You guys asked for it, so we're giving it to you. A brand new Seattle Seahawks only YouTube channel here at Chat Sports. You see the link at the bottom. It's in the comments and the description as well. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks TV. Click that link. It'll take you right to our Seahawks only channel. We're going to be posting a whole bunch of brand new Seahawks videos for you guys. Now, if you aren't a Seahawks fan, that's okay. There is still a chance for you guys to get your own YouTube channel as well for whatever your favorite team is. We've built up channels for all 32 NFL teams. If you get to 100 subs for your favorite team, we'll give you guys a video with a chance to get more videos in the future. If you bring it like the Seahawks fan base did, it's Broncos TV, Bengals TV, or Chatsports.com slash team tv they're all available in the description so go check it out click your favorite team and once you guys get to 100 subs there's a video coming your way all right more seahawks mailbag questions first up from chandler how are they of course referring to the seahawks going to address the o-line issues they've had a great question, Chandler. Uh, they kind of started with Brandon Shell, Damian Lewis. The right side of that O-line has really kind of been rebuilt. I think there'll be competition at all, pretty much every spot except left tackle. Dwayne Brown is locked in there. I don't know about you guys. I'm a little bit concerned about that right side. I actually like Damian Lewis long term, but eh, you're banking on a, on a first-year player. is always a little bit of risk there. Brandon Shell also eh, a bit concerning, which is where Big Boy 54 checks in as well. He wants to know what right tackles the Seahawks can bring in to compete with Brandon Shell. Now, in many years, there aren't a bunch of great tackle options out there, especially in June. But there are some that I think are worth considering for the Seattle Seahawks. Jason Peters is out there. Kelvin Beecham, who was a left tackle across from Brandon Shell for New York. Damar Dotson was a longtime starter for the Bucks at right tackle. Jared Valdir came out of retirement and wasn't terrible. Cordy Glenn had some issues with the Bengals, but was good with the Bills. If I ran the Seahawks, I'm calling Jason Peters today, and I'm saying, hey, Jason, do you want to come flip sides and start at right tackle for us? I think that would work out really well for the Seahawks if, of course, Peters is actually willing to do that. From Andrew Sunday, if I mispronounce your last name, I'm terribly sorry. I think Russell Wilson is one of the greatest quarterbacks in history and way too underrated. What are your thoughts? Uh, maybe greatest quarterback in history is a little bit premature, but I do think Wilson is underrated, and I think that's shown because he hasn't had a single MVP vote in his time in the NFL, which when I was first told that, I'm like, there's no way that's right, and then I verified. I'm like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Wilson has, in reality, carried this Seahawks team the past couple of seasons. The volume hasn't been great because Seattle is a run-first team, which I disagree with. They have a top-three NFL quarterback. The Seahawks are doing a disservice to themselves by not letting Wilson throw the football around to Lockett and Metcalf and all of those tight ends. Wilson should be in the MVP discussion every single year. My fear is that he'll end up in the Drew Brees category, where... Yeah, he's a great quarterback, he'll be a Hall of Famer, but he never wins an NFL MVP. I hope the answer is yes, but let me know what you guys think. Type Y for yes, Wilson will win an MVP, or N for no. From Gordon Johnson, will the Seahawks sign Des Bryant? Possible, sure. He has been training for an NFL return, hasn't played in a real NFL game since 2017. Yeah, it's actually been that long. The Seahawks could certainly use another wide receiver. They have DK Metcalf. They have Tyler Lockett as a great, well, I guess it's really number two, number one. It's a great one-two punch in the NFL. I don't trust the rest of that receiving core. Now, that's okay for Seattle because they're going to run the ball as much, if not more, than the vast majority of NFL teams out there. And there has never, ever in the history of the NFL been a bad one-year deal with little to no guaranteed money. That makes sense for an NFL organization. So if Dez wants that, if Dez wants to go to the Seattle Seahawks and sign that, that one-year deal, that makes a whole lot of sense. 
as I said earlier, our Seahawks only channel is up. In fact, there's a video up there right now, very similar to this one, except there are some bonus questions on that video from you guys, including some on the wide receiver core, Antonio Brown, the backup quarterback battle. So if you want the extra video, the extra questions on that video, head over to chatsports.com slash Seahawks TV and subscribe today. Trade idea coming in now with the Redskins and Ryan Kerrigan. The Redskins get a 2020 third round pick, and the Seahawks get Ryan Kerrigan, the talented pass rusher. I think the value is actually about right. Now, Kerrigan is a little bit expensive. I'm not convinced the Redskins are going to actually trade him, but let me know in the comments who you think says no. Type S for the Seahawks, W for the Washington Redskins. If I'm Seattle, I'm actually all over this particular trade. Next up from Sam Z, do you think the Seahawks should add Carlos Dunlap after the Bengals cut him? They should. I actually don't see the Bengals cutting Carlos Dunlap, though. A trade could maybe make some more sense, but he's a good football player. I don't think the Bengals are going to cut him right now. Now, Seahawks fans, there are some jerseys on sale for you guys. Head over to chatsports.com slash Seahawks jersey. 25% off a whole bunch of colors and styles. They're all Nike jerseys. They've got Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf. They've got the, the, the number 12 fan jerseys as well because you guys are awesome. 25% off at chatsports.com slash Seahawks jersey. And don't worry, that link's in the comments and the description as well. From Matt Regan, which edge rusher between Clowney, Yannick, and Griffin should the Hawks target? I think Yannick because trading for him might only take one first, and Seattle can't seem to get anyone good with their firsts anymore. Uh, people don't like it when I bring up the Seahawks first round draft record, but I also don't think that trading away first round picks because you're not drafting well with them is actually a very good thought process. There, is, there, are, there are arguments for all three of these players, right? Everson Griffin's probably the cheapest of that group and actually had almost the same amount of production as Yannick Ngakwe did last year. Jadevian Clowney, the, the Seahawks know him. They know what he's able to do, and he played through injury last year. Yannick, meanwhile, is young, also the most expensive from a trade capital standpoint and just a pure contract. He probably wants more than $20 million. So everyone out there watching, pick a defensive end for me. You're the Seahawks. Who are you signing? G for Everson Griffin, C for Clowney, or N for Yannick Ngakwe? If I'm Seattle, maybe I just go Griffin because it's a cheaper one-year option and allows me to develop some of those earlier round draft picks I've spent in recent years at the position. From the goal line, do you think the Seahawks have any chance of winning the NFC West? It's one of the best divisions in NFL history. Again, history, I don't know about that, but it is one of, if not the best divisions this year in the NFL. Last season, the Niners went 13-3 and nearly won the Super Bowl. Seattle was 11-5. and The Rams were 9-7. and Yeah, the Cardinals were 5-10-1, and but who thinks they're only going to win five games this year? Even if you guys don't like Arizona, I think we're aware they are a team on the rise. So that is going to be a tough division to win. I'm not convinced Seattle will win it, but I do fully expect they're going to be competing for it, and they're probably going to end up making the playoffs this year. So everyone in the comments, especially you Seahawks fans, predict what the Seahawks record will be. Will they go 11-5, and 10-6? Are they going to win 12 or 13 games? Let me know what you guys think. From Sanja Marie, before Carson and Penny got hurt at the end of last season, we saw the emergence of a dynamic duo. With the additions at running back this offseason, are the Seahawks looking to move on from the promising one-two punch in Carson and Penny? I don't think this year they're moving on necessarily. Now, I think maybe in two or three years, I don't think they'll both be on the team because the, the nice part of having Carson and Penny is that they're cheap right now. They're still on their first contracts. You're not paying them big bucks. I think the addition of Carlos Hyde was a, hey, we're not – fully confident in Penny in particular, Carson too, but Penny's ability to stay fully healthy. That's a concern for the Seattle Seahawks right now. DJ Dallas's draft pick was about having another third down back. So I think long term, yeah, you're not going to see Carson and Penny both re-sign in Seattle. I do think though that for this year, they are banking on that rotation at running back with Carlos Hyde included being a key factor in the offense. From Hockey Boy 5517, 
Will Marshawn Lynch be re-signed later on in the season, almost like last year? Look, there were rumors, even just uh, two weeks ago, that Lynch could end up re-signing with the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks, excuse me. But the addition of Carlos Hyde drastically reduces those chances. Where are you going to play Marshawn Lynch when he, in reality, is maybe your fourth best back and doesn't contribute on special teams? The addition of Hyde, unless there are more injuries, means Lynch is not going to be back in Seattle. Now, if there is another rash of the position, which, of course, no one involved with the Seahawks wants, then Lynch makes sense. But I don't think you're going to see Lynch return in the near future unless those injuries occur.